And welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I want to go through the principles of Newton's laws of motion as they apply to a Saturn V rocket launching into orbit. And I'm going to assume that you already know why the Saturn V rocket is a multi-stage rocket. But in quick summary, basically the rocket is required to reach at least the orbital velocity, which is around seven to eight kilometers per second. And it can't do that instantaneously, so it does it in stages. And as you know, the rocket goes up into sections. So when it first launches, the whole rocket launches up like so. But then at a certain altitude, the rocket then actually separates so that you actually get stage separation. So what we have, of course, is this is, gets dropped off. And then, of course, it continues and we have now the third stage. And so what you now have here is the second stage is dropped off and we have a third stage. And then finally, of course, you may get that continuing on like so. If we want to examine Newton's laws of motion, we need to remind ourselves of what is at play here. Well, the first law I usually like to refer to is the third law. And the third law, of course, there says for every action, there's an opposite reaction. In essence, what it's saying is that the rocket is applying force on the gases in the downward direction, then therefore there is an equal force of the gases back on the rocket in the upward direction. And so that what makes the rocket move. That is the gases apply force on the rocket in the vertical direction. Of course, the second law refers to the acceleration of that rocket and the acceleration is determined by that net force in this case we're going to talk about predominantly due to the force by the gas on the rockets and any drag forces over here and divided by the mass. Of course, the rocket will therefore accelerate, but it won't accelerate at constant rate, as I will explain shortly. And then, of course, there is the first law. And the first law is that if there's no net forces going on, then the acceleration that the rocket experiences will be zero as long as there is no other forces acting. So when this net force is not due to uh, simply the thrust over here. It's the total sum forces, uh, which means including the drag and so forth. So in reality, if a rocket is actually going up into orbit, it won't actually experience, the rocket itself won't experience a complete net force of zero. But we'll talk about that in a moment. So what are the physics principles involved in having these stages dropping off? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the physics of it by showing you a number of graphs. And to do that, I'm going to refer to some data that may be very useful. Now to help us understand what's happening in terms of the physics of our launch, what I have here is a table uh, of a simulation of a Saturn V rocket that uh, launch. This has been compiled by a guy named Robert Brunig, and I'll give you the link to his website. And he has um, provided data based on a simulation of rocket launch. It's quite accurate. And what it does, it provides you various data of the actual Saturn V rocket. So the tables we here have here is we have uh, the time. And as you can see, the time goes all the way down to the first uh, 12 or so minutes. Then we have, in terms of the vehicle mass, which includes the vehicle itself uh, and the propellant. And as you can see, that the mass of the vehicle is, is going to stay roughly the same. You can see also that the propellant is decreasing. You've got the flow rate, the total thrust, the acceleration, and so forth. You've got the range and the altitude of the rocket, its drag. And lastly, also what I have here, if I've, cr I've created some data based on its momentum and gravity. And what I've done is I've produced a whole series of graphs based on uh, the data here that looks at the weight, the range, uh, the mass, the momentum, g-forces and velocity. And what we're going to do is we're going to interpret those graphs and look how that applies to the rocket launch. So let's get started. So what's happening here? So we have our here image of our rockets in their various separated stages. And as you can see here, I have three graphs. 
I have one, I have the range, and one I have here, the altitude. Now the range is, uh, is fairly easy to understand, is that the clearly the rocket initially is uh, launching vertically up and slowly over the course of time, as it leaves uh, Cape Canaveral, it moves moving further and further east. The range is moving away, moving at an increasing rate, and that's simply because it's speeding up. The altitude is, it starts very a low, a slow increase, but then it really increases at a great amount. But then what happens, of course, is as it starts to go horizontally, then of course the amount of altitude it has isn't as great. And so eventually it platters out when it actually ends up into a roughly a low Earth orbit. When you combine those two graphs, and here we have a graph in terms of the range and the altitude, you basically get a picture of its path in a three-dimensional space or a two-dimensional space. And so you can see that you have this rocket forming an arc. Now, at this case, there's no breaks in here. And so the separations doesn't uh, show in any of these particular graphs. Let's have a look at these two graphs. Now, here we're looking at the mass and the weight and now you start to see these breaks here in these graphs and these breaks are related to the uh, first stage separation and the second stage separation i'm not worrying about the third stage up here at the moment so we're really looking at those three stages and so as you can see is the mass is decreasing at a constant rate now why is that well because it's losing fuel so the dry weight of the rocket stays constant but it's losing fuel all the time so its mass is decreasing. Then you'll see this little drop here. Well, it's just jettisoned the first stage. And now because of the fact that we have now less of a rocket and we have less fuel decrease, you'll see that the rate at which it loses fuel isn't as great as it's here. I mean, clearly there's less fuel held in the second stage than it is in the first stage. And so that happens there. You can see weight is very similar there is a decrease in weight, but notice that the rate of the weight decrease is not the same as the mass is decreased. And why is that? Well, of course, as the rocket continues to go up, weight is a combination, of course, of um, mass and the acceleration due to gravity. And so, therefore, since it is increasing altitude, the value for g, its acceleration due to gravity, is actually uh, less. And so you're going to get a slope that is a little less because the uh, although the mass is decreasing, the acceleration due to gra gravity is also um, decreasing, and therefore the rate of weight is not loss isn't as as great. This is probably the most important graph to understand in terms of what is happening in terms of the Newton's laws of motion. Now, what we have here is our rocket. And our rocket, of course, initially goes in a vertical direction, like so. And what is happening, of course, is there is thrust coming out here, and therefore that is applying a force. The gases apply a force in this direction. Of course, that means there will be an acceleration. Newton's second law says that you have, if you have a net force, that is a combination of the mass multiplied by the acceleration, and therefore the acceleration will be determined by the thrust divided by the mass. Now, that acceleration will be constant if we were to assume that the mass remains constant, but that's not the case. As the rocket starts to go in a vertical direction, it is constantly losing mass due to the fuel. So since the mass over here is decreasing, the acceleration is increasing. And so initially, the astronauts over here are experiencing 1G forces. This is supposed to be uh, equivalent to roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. And you can see this data stuff starts roughly at the 1. But of course, as the uh, astronauts are increasing in their acceleration in the upward direction, therefore they're experiencing not only the force on their chairs due to the reaction force due to their weight, but also it is accelerating at an increasing rate in the upward direction. So the amount of g-forces they're experiencing will be increasing and going up. Now this will continue to go up like so. But eventually, you're going to get stage separation like 
So, and so what's happening here? The way that stage separation happens is that these nozzles here don't turn off automatically before the separation. They actually turn off in stages. So you'll notice here there are actually five nozzles and it's the outer ones that go off first. And so if that's the case, suddenly you have a drop in force. And that is what this first drop is over here. So when this drop happens, it's the outer nozzles that turn off and then the internal nozzle then drops, uh, turns off before the stage separation at this point in time. Well, clearly at that point and before we actually have any rocketry going on in the second stage here, the actual rocket is in essence in free fall. That is, it has momentum, it has a velocity in an upward direction, but there is no force applied to it. And so therefore the only acceleration that the astronauts are experiencing is the acceleration due to gravity. But in essence, they're getting no reaction on the seats of their um, on their backsides. And so suddenly we have here a total drop down to zero G. So they're actually experiencing weightlessness. Now they're not weightless. They're still experiencing the acceleration due to gravity, but because their chairs are not experiencing a reaction force, they're in essence experiencing weightlessness and so therefore drops to zero. But of course, eventually what's going to happen is that these rockets now start to fire. And then suddenly, of course, we have an increase in G forces. And as you can see, it actually from there on in starts to increase again. Now, why is that? Well, the same principle. We have fuel being spent over here. This particular two stages are continuing to move on, but the mass is decreasing and therefore the whole rocket is increasing in acceleration, but just not at the same rate. Of course, that continues until the next stage breaks off. And for that to happen, of course, this has to turn off this fuel. And so again, same reason, they don't go off at the same time. You'll have these zigzaggy lines that represent different uh, nozzles turning off at different times. But eventually, of course, they're all turned off. And in essence, the rocket is in free fall, even though it has ongoing momentum in the upward direction. And so for a short brief time, the astronauts experiencing weightlessness until, of course, we have the last stage over here and firing their rockets. And then, of course, you're going to get this situation over here. Throughout this whole principle, Newton's second law is applied. That is, F is equal to MA. And since we're assuming that for each of the stages, the thrust is relatively constant, and in fact, the data from the table says as much, then a decreasing in mass due to the fuel loss will result in an increasing acceleration as a result. Now let's have a look at the velocity. Well, since the acceleration is actually increasing, uh, then you're going to expect, of course, that the velocity is also increasing. Now you're going to see that, of course, here in the first stage. Now at point, this point, of course, you're going to have a separation of that first stage but it initially already has momentum. So therefore you're not going to get a drop in velocity. It's going to remain where it is until this particular booster fires off. And then we're going to have again, an increasing velocity. The whole idea is, is to get into the orbital velocity. As you can see, progressively, we've got a reaching the velocity. And so you can see that by the time we get to this time over here, which is 700 seconds, you can see now we are already traveling around 7.5 kilometers per second, which is approximately the um, orbital velocity of um, the rocket that it needs to get there. And then over here, we have a graph that looks at momentum. A reminder, of course, momentum is a combination of mass and velocity. Now, of course, we know that the mass is decreasing and the velocity is increasing, but they're not decreasing and increasing at the same rate. So the momentum does not remain constant. You can clearly see that although the mass is decreasing, the increasing velocity is much greater at rate, and therefore you're going to get this increasing momentum in the first stage. Then suddenly you have a drop here. Well, why is there a drop? Of course, is you have a drop of mass, and so therefore the momentum drops. And then from there on in, 
you can see that the momentum is fairly constant because we now have less mass and the increase in velocity is at a lower rate. The two uh, rates start to cancel out and as you can see here and here in the third stage you got the momentum roughly staying the same. Well I hope that gives you a bit of an understanding of the application of understanding the motion of a rocket. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful and remember like share and subscribe. Oh and if you have a comment or a question or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.